This is one of the biggest smartphones in the world, and it is a gaming phone with pop-up triggers. This is the Black Shark 3 Pro, which is a sub-brand of Xiaomi. I have the 8 gig, 256 gig version over here. Prices at the top right corner, transferred from the current Chinese exchange rate. We get a nice snazzy cover in the box, better than any others, and I have seen some stickers in the box here too, which look quite great. Here is the phone out the box, extremely heavy. You can see some standout specs there, which we'll get to in a minute. We have a USB Type A to Type C cord in the box and we also get a wonderful 65 watt charging block and unlike the Mi 10 Pro it can actually charge at 65 watts which is great. We're going to move on to the actual device. This is the armor gray version of the Black Shark 3 Pro. It is the only version besides the black version that you get for the Pro version. The regular Black Shark 3 comes in an extra color variant. It looks absolutely stunning, but it is seriously heavy at 253 grams. To give you an idea, the ROG Phone 2 is pretty heavy, but that was just 240 grams. And the Samsung S20 Ultra is seriously heavy, and that's just 222 grams. It is much bigger than the ROG Phone 2 over here, as you can see in width and height. And it is quite a bit thicker too, though thankfully we have the headphone jacks on both phones and the ROG Phone 2 is actually last generation. So based on aesthetics, what do you guys think looks better? Let me know in the comments down below. And looking at some other massive phones, we have the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra over here. It absolutely dwarfs it. It makes it look tiny. And its parent brand, Xiaomi, have released its flagship phone, the Mi 10 Pro, which looks tiny. We get some fingerprints on the glass back over there, though we do have some nice metal framing on the back, which run through to the side borders, which look great. We have a very high power button over there and we have the shock switch over there to go into shock space. We have the game trigger over here but they will raise up later when we turn on game mode and we do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack this was missing from the black shock 2 pro so i'm glad they brought it back we also have a volume rocker though it is not split and we have a dual channel well dual sim slot over here but no expansion for micro sd unfortunately we're limited to usb 2 transfer speeds so it's not going to be too fast when transferring between your phone and your PC. We have 65 watt charging. We also have an option for 18 watt magnetic charging, which can come off the back over there, though you'll have to buy that separately. With that massive 5,000 milliamp hour battery, you need such fast charging. We also have dual facing front stereo speakers, but unfortunately it lacks Dolby Atmos. Nevertheless, this phone looks absolutely gorgeous. It is a mammoth of a phone. I'm not quite sure how I feel about the blue around the camera and the magnetic strip at the bottom over there, but it looks pretty snazzy with the cover on. The cover feels really great, much better than any other the cases I have seen with previous gaming phones. It doesn't really make it much bigger, but it does block the LED lights in the middle over there, the little shark logo. Take that off and there is the light. It looks pretty cool, but you do still have the LED effects with the cover on when it shows the LEDs on the camera and that magnetic strip at the bottom there. Moving on to the actual effects that you can choose. There are a bunch of them and you can pre-save them and add it to a whole bunch of different features, such as when you're getting a call and notification. We have different implementations on that, such as the ROG Phone 2. Let me know what you guys think think looks better. We have a 7.1 inch AMOLED 1440p resolution screen over here with HDR10+, 500 nits, a 90 hertz refresh rate and a 270 hertz touch refresh rate on this panel. It is an absolute monster to feast your eyes on and when you pair it against the ROG Phone 2 left and the S20 Ultra on your right, it really makes them look pretty tiny. When you look at the borders on the phone though, it, they are quite bigger than that of the S20 Ultra, but the S20 Ultra is not a gaming phone. They are actually slightly slimmer than the ROG Phone 2's borders over here, but the side, the left and right borders are not quite as slim as the ROG Phone 2. We have 2K resolution and we have intelligent 90 hertz. I guess it kind of fluctuates. 60 hertz on the left, 90 hertz on the right. Let's do a quick fluidity test over here. We're going to drop down to 25% speed over here, really slowing down the clip to show you guys the difference here. And you can see a massive difference going to 10%. Look at how much faster the page moves on the right hand side, showing that 90 hertz refresh rate panel. This is great for scrolling through things such as Instagram and Facebook. Really great job here though it would have been nice to see 120 or 144 hertz here Xiaomi hopefully you can get it next time around though that 2k resolution is absolutely awesome you can change the color schemes over here which is great and we even have sunscreen mode over here so that your phone can get brighter outdoors making that 500 nits really shine we have a 20 megapixel f 2.2 selfie snap over here with 1080p 30 frames per second recording the selfie snapper looks great especially in portrait mode look at that no edge detection and let's shoot through to video 
What's up guys, this is Technic recording a 1080p 30 frames per second selfie video recording on the Black Shark 3 Pro. It is limited and completely capped at 1080p 30 frames per second. Let me know what you guys think of the video and audio quality using the selfie cam video on the Black Shark 3 Pro. At the back of the Black Shark 3 Pro we have a 64 megapixel Sony IMX 686 sensor with an aperture of f1.8. have a 13 megapixel 2.3 ultra wide lens and a 5 megapixel f2.2 depth sensor. Here's the 13 megapixel ultra wide, this is a raw shot, 64 megapixel main over here. Now we're going to do a 300% crop on that 64 megapixel main. It's quite fuzzy and blurry so I don't suggest you crop it much. Here back to the 64 main to show you guys the difference with the 16 megapixel bin shot over here. We have two times digital unfortunately no telephoto lens so we have five times digital as well but this is actually the max zoom so that kind of sucks. We are using our five megapixel depth shot there which looks fantastic. Back to the bin shot and to show you guys the macro mode over here there's no dedicated macro camera but the macro mode looks fantastic. Here's 1080p recording at 60 frames per second. There is no optical image stabilizer over here so things are slightly wonky when recording at 60 frames per second if you drop it to 30 frames per second things get slightly more stable I'll show you guys in a minute here is 4k 60 frames per second but unfortunately there is no 8k option on this phone as you see with other Snapdragon 865 processing chip phones here is the 30 frames per second ultra wide at 1080p as I said slightly more stable at 30 frames per second but a little bit more jittery over there 4k 30 frames per second ultra wide once again both the 1080p and 4k at ultra wide are capped at 30 frames per second which is a bit of a bummer since the Mi 10 Pro can do 60 with both ultra wides. In the software department, things look pretty much like any other Mi UI phone, though this is using Joy UI. So very similar, they just rebranded the name over there. There are some really interesting things with this phone when using it as your daily driver over, over here and not just for gaming. We have dark mode, which is pretty standard these days with AMOLED panels. It looks pretty great on all system apps. And we also have always on display options over here, all the same options that you've seen on previous Xiaomi devices and then some, such as this awesome Black Shark one over here. More customizability over here with reducing the size of the icon or making it bigger or smaller. It looks absolutely great. We also have a process manager similar to something that you would see in a Windows computer. It looks absolutely awesome and you can really keep on track of which apps are using the most amount of RAM and processing power. We also have an under display fingerprint sensor which is good to see as most phones are doing these days though it is really high up so you really have to stretch with such a big phone. Nevertheless that massive, well that tiny power button at the top over there is really hard to reach but once you do reach it there is also face unlock which works pretty quick too. The biggest thing with this phone when it comes to software is that shark switch over there. Switch it across and you get into shark space. Shark space is the gaming hub for all your games to keep you secluded from everything else in the world and just get back into gaming. Who needs a switch guys? We are using game for peace over here which is the Chinese version of PUBG since it actually allows for 90 frames per second. Listen to that. That is just epic guys. So we have this little monitor over here which can show us the frames per second, battery temperature and CPU frequency which is great. We're gonna shoot over to PUBG over here and play some games and we're gonna jump from a really high rock here and almost kill ourselves. Thank goodness we have a little teammate right close by to revive us. Listen to this. Those dual stereo speakers sound absolutely incredible. Better get this guy. It sounds incredible and honestly these touch triggers are unlike anything I've seen before. They are really addictive to press. Onto Bullet Force over here, it came way before PUBG and COD Mobile. It shows 60 frames per second over there but once we change the refresh rate to 90 hertz over here, there is no FPS cap on this game and we get 90 frames per second which is really awesome to see. Nice and fluid and at 2K resolution I must add it looks super crispy especially at high settings. Let's go ahead and shoot some people. Those stereo speakers though guys, those sound absolutely amazing. Now we're moving on to Dead Trigger 2, also no frames per second cap, it's locked at 60 but we have to change it back to 90 once again to get that wonderful fluid 90 frames per second and there it is. Shooting over to a 60 frame per second cap game, which is Call of Duty Mobile over here, we're gonna run things at very high across the board, and as you can see, it is capped at 60 frames per second. Even when we change it to 90 hertz, it is still capped at 60 frames per second. So you cannot take 60 FPS games and upscale them to 90 FPS. That would be frame skipping, and it would pretty much end with the same result, just showing you the numbers.
Once again, those speakers are phenomenal. Let's drop it to high and throw it on max FPS to see if we can get 90 hertz over here. Nope, still stuck at 60 frames per second. So if you have a 60 hertz game, guys, this phone cannot jump it up to 90, as many people have told you. On the left, you have the K30 Pro Zoom Edition, Black Shark 3 Pro in the middle, and the Mi 10 Pro on the right-hand side. This is the Xiaomi family going head-to-head -head in an Antutu benchmark run. Both panels on the right-hand side, I'm limiting the Black Shark 3 Pro to 1080p resolution here, and both panels on the right-hand side, the Black Shark 3 Pro and the Mi 10 Pro, both stick with 90 hertz panels. The K30 Pro Zoom Edition just has a 60 hertz panel over here. We have the battery at the start here in percentage and in degree Celsius, as well as the CPU in degree Celsius over here. We're gonna check that at the end of the test. I'm gonna speed this test up a lot. I'll bring you guys a more in-depth test next week sometime, but for now, let's just jump to the results. And the results of these phones when it comes to battery is the Black Shark 3 Pro with the biggest battery actually drained the most over here. We have the hottest phones being the K30 Pro Zoom Edition and Mi 10 Pro, both adding on 9.7 degrees Celsius, and the Black Shark 3 Pro with its liquid cooling only adding on 4.7 degrees Celsius. That is very impressive when it comes to cooling. The same thing can be said when we speak about the CPU degrees in Celsius. The K30 Pro and Mi 10 Pro jumped up by 10 degrees and the Black Shark 3 Pro only by 5 degrees. That is absolutely incredible guys but we have first place over here going to the Mi 10 Pro with 587,000 points second place going to the K30 Pro Zoom Edition with 585 very close there and 574,000 points for the Black Shark 3 Pro we have the best CPU GPU and memory department in the K30 Pro the second best user experience for the Black Shark 3 Pro leaving the best user experience for the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro and I completely agree with that the Black Shark 3 Pro is one unusual looking device though if you're a gamer it will please you for sure it is a tank of a phone it is seriously heavy and seriously big and it is really hard to use as a general phone but for gaming it is absolutely fantastic get those wonderful leds over there and try reach for that power button it's quite hard though we do have shark space pretty low down over there to reach and that's the thing you're going to be using the most if you are a gamer anyway you have some absolutely epic features when it comes to gaming and we have those pop-up triggers which are honestly the only of its kind on any phone in the world exit shark space and those triggers disappear and then when we move on to using this phone as a general day-to-day -day device, it is quite massive. The software is pretty great, I must say, and then Ultra 2K resolution is insanely gorgeous with that high intelligent 90 hertz refresh rate panel. It looks absolutely stunning, even up close, but I'm not too sure it's a day-to-day -day driver. Obviously, this is one of three of the best gaming phones out at the moment, that being the ROG Phone 2 and the Red Magic 5G. We'll both have comparisons to it very soon, and of course, you can save some cash and go for the Redmi K30 Pro or Xiaomi's flagship the Mi 10 Pro. So if gaming is not for you, then pick up any of those devices. But if you are a through and through gamer, it is very hard not to recommend the Xiaomi Black Shark 3 Pro. Guys, this is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.